everyone, welcome back to SG Karma. So since 2020, Polestar has essentially been a one-car company. So aside from the limited edition Polestar 1, Polestar really only has the Polestar 2 in production. Well, Polestar does have quite an ambitious plan to roll out multiple cars in consecutive years, but due to some production delays, that has been pushed back a little bit, right? The timeline has moved slightly. So this year, we are actually getting two new Polestars, and the new top-of-the-range model is this, the new Polestar 3. So here we have it, the Polestar 3. And this is quite a big car, right? It's over 4.9 meters long, over 2.1 meters wide, and it's actually over 1.6 meters tall, and it has close to a three meter long wheelbase. One thing to point out is that while this is built on the SPA2 platform, and that's shared with the Volvo EX90, while that is a seven seater, this is strictly a five seater. Now let's talk about how the car looks, right? So it's probably quite a familiar Polestar design, a lot of the same Polestar elements that you have probably seen on the Polestar 2. So we have the dual blade headlights, we also have this smart zone area. But a couple of cool things to point out, there is this wing element here, right? It's not actually very obvious, it's perhaps more obvious if you look over here. What this does is that it helps with the aerodynamic efficiency of the car. Now over here on the side profile of the car, you can see that it's fairly typical SUV proportions, right? But this car is over 1.6 meters tall. Surprisingly, it's not as tall as I expected. And you know, for an SUV, it's actually quite compact. Now wheels, massive 22 inch wheels. And of course, we also have Brembo brakes. Now let's go check out the rear of the car. Now here at the rear of the car, we have of course a very distinctive rear tail light signature. And it's quite a strong rear end. And I think it looks quite nice. Now, boot space, we have 597 liters of space and that's plenty of space, right? And, cool thing, this car has air suspension. That means that you can lower the car, raise the car. So, you know, if you're finding it a little bit hard to load stuff, just lower the car down and chuck your stuff in the boots. Now, just got in the rear of the car and first things first, soft close doors. Now, let's talk about space, right? Leg room is plenty and headroom is very generous as well. And this is a very comfortable space, right? We have little cushions over here, little cushions on the headrest here. And you know, this really speaks to that comfort priority of this car, you know? And overall, it is a very comfortable space. I like how it feels over here. And slightly different from the Polestar 4 and even the 2, right? The middle seat, you can tell that it's designed to be set in, right? So if I slide over in the middle, Again, it's perfectly comfortable, you know, you can easily fit three adults here in the rear and this has a completely flat floor as you can probably see over here. So you're going to be sitting very comfortably. And I also particularly like that the center console does not protrude out, right? So everyone almost has equal amounts of space and that's just a really nice quality about this car. Now, in terms of amenities, we of course have rear aircon vents. We also have rear temperature control and heated seats as well. Perhaps not so relevant in Singapore, but you know, it's there. And we also have two USB-C ports. That's the rear, let's go jump in the front. Here in the front of the Polestar 3, it is at once both familiar yet different, right? So some of the key functionality would be kind of familiar to the Polestar 2. So you have sort of vertically aligned central infotainment system running the Android Auto OS, right? So it's a native Google system. The way it's been configured now, it's a little bit different and it's actually quite interesting, right? So the key thing to note is that we have a map display first and foremost, and then we have two widgets. So it's set up to be your media and then your phone. And this is fixed, right? So the idea being that these are the functions that people will use most of the time. Maps primarily, and then perhaps if you're on Spotify, or on Tidal, and then obviously your phone. And then a third role would be all your other relevant information, right? So range and trip, radio, your camera adjustments, glove box. And then finally, you have your you know, climb controls and then your key, things like your home button, your you know, driving settings, so on and so forth. Now, one interesting thing about this particular role is that Currently, you can see there's adjustments and glove box because that's what you need when the car is stationary and stop, right? But if I turn on the car, it actually changes. So it changes to speed limit and your one pedal drive. So I think this speaks to that 
design thinking that goes through, right? Which is very well thought out and is very essential to what a driver needs, but nothing more, nothing less. The rest of the cabin, there are a bunch of new stuff as well. First and foremost, obviously that cluster is different. I think it's quite nice. It's a little bit on the compact side, but again, it's not getting your way in any way. And one nice thing is that you can actually change your different you know, view settings. So you can have your map, you can have your sort of pilot assist view, and then you just have a simple view. I do want to talk about this steering wheel. It's different from what you would find in the Polestar 2 and actually different from the Polestar 4 as well. If you look at it, it looks kind of blank, right? There are no actual indicators of what these functions are and that's because they actually operate differently depending on how the car is being set up. So primarily these buttons changes your view and then this is your voice command. And actually on the left side, nothing's happening. However, when you do start your, your pilot assist, then this actually controls your speed. One particular thing I like about this new steering wheel is that it feels great in my hands, right? It feels the exact sort of girth that I want it to be and it's just a nice steering wheel to hold. Now, I do have to talk about equipment in this car. So this is meant to be a premium top of the range product and you get premium top of the range equipment as well. The big headlining one is a Bowers & Wilkin 25 speaker over 1000 watt sound system and this supports Dolby Atmos and that means that you can play some insane tunes, right? The only kind of downside of that is that Spotify doesn't support Dolby Atmos at this point so you will need a Tidal subscription but if you do, let's play some music. Yeah. It sounds fantastic and I just love that there's a sort of theatrical way when you're just sitting in the car. Right? So for example, if you're charging your car, you're waiting for your kids or what, you know, you can play some really, really nice tunes and it really elevates that overall cabin experience. And beyond that, obviously, we also have all kinds of sustainable materials. So we have this sort of microtech material, we have these, these leather seats are sustainably sourced as well. And that, you know, that's just part of the Polestar brand. Now talking about these seats, because these are the optional Napa leather seats, you also have ventilation and you have massage, so that's great. All right, so I'm driving the Polestar 3 now, and it's worth pointing out this car isn't fitted with the performance pack, so I only have 360 kilowatts and over 800 newton meters of torque. This car will do 0 to 100 in 5 seconds, and honestly, it's one of those where if I put my foot down, it's, it doesn't kick you in the head because this is quite a heavy car, but it still picks up very, very well. And this car also has a 107 kilowatt hour battery, which means that you have a range of over 600 km on a full charge. So how does it feel on the road? First and foremost, it feels comfortable and it should be, right? This car has air suspension, you know, it's an active air suspension, so it will raise its right height at high speed speed, so you're a little bit more efficient. And we also have active dampers, which means that you can actually select from I guess soft, not so soft, and kind of firm, but it's actually not super, super harsh. So obviously in the softer setting, it's actually super comfortable, eats up bumps in the road very, very well. But I've tried it in the harder setting as well, and while it does firm everything up, you know, it does a little bit of a better job of controlling body roll, it's not harsh in any way. I think that's fitting to the character of this car, right? This is, while it does have plenty of performance, it's more of a comfort tool, it's more of an executive tool, and I think it does that very, very well. I also like that the steering is a little bit on the lighter side. I actually really like this steering wheel for some reason. I think it fits very nicely in my hands, and this is a nice car to drive. So yes, this car is great at highway speeds. How does it feel around corners though? Because you know, this is supposed to be a performance model as well. I will say it's quite impressive. It holds its own quite well. You know, this is fundamentally a big car, right? 2.5 tons. So it feels heavy, you know, when you're doing hard braking, you feel the weight of the car. But I will say that it is still quite nimble. You know, I like the way it feels through the steering wheel. and. One interesting thing about this car is that it has something called torque vectoring dual clutch, or so TVDC, right? Typically, in a normal torque vectoring system, what the car does is it breaks the inside wheels to pull you into a corner, whereas on this one, it actually sends power to the outside wheels to help push you in a corner. And I've driven this up some mountain roads around some hairpins, and you definitely can feel that, right? If you go hard into a corner, turn hard, get early on the power, you can feel the car sort of scrambling to give you a lot of power to push you into the corner and then continue all the way through 
true. I'll be very honest how often our post our three drivers going to be doing that. Not very often because, you know, in Singapore, we don't really have hairpins. But, you know, on some of these nice mountain roads, it can be quite an interesting way to drive this car. And, you know, that speaks to the car's dynamic capability. And it is quite fun to drive. But again, ultimately, I don't think that core intention of this car, right? It has that performance, credentials and capability, but it wants to be an executive SUV. I think that's where it really, really shines. It's just nice and comfortable. It's smooth over bumps. It's quiet. And it just makes for a very relaxing driving experience. And it's always good to know that you have plenty of power under your right foot. Now, I also want to mention the ADA system. So on this particular one, how it works is that you actually hit down on the gear selector stock. And, and then subsequently, you can then adjust the speed on the left buttons here because if not it doesn't actually do anything so i'm pressing it now and nothing's happening right so if i just turn it on yep let the car do all the driving for you and it's quite a seamless system I, I like how it works this car also has lane change assist if you have system on and it detects that it can help you change lanes you just hit the indicator stop you have to leave your hands on the wheel and the car will change lane for you probably only works on the highway so these ADA systems come courtesy of the pilot pack and in Singapore there are going to be a bunch of packs available so you know you'll have to wait till the car is launched to find out what's going to be available for Singapore because our understanding is that we will be getting the MY25 model. So some quick conclusions about my time with the Polestar 3. But it's not just a performance step up, it's also a step up in terms of overall premium quality and I think that's what the Polestar 3 is designed to be. You know, this is the top of the range model and it definitely feels that way. You know, it's come packed with equipment and it still feels like Polestar, right? That Scandi DNA definitely still permeates through everything about this car from the design to the way it drives. I am enjoying myself a lot driving this car, you know. While it can be quite an interesting performance tool, I think primarily it wants to be an executive tool, right? It's supposed to be comfortable, it's supposed to be pleasing, it's supposed to be easy to drive and it is all of those things. And I think that's very impressive. This is a worthy car to sit at the top of the Polestar range. We also understand that there will be a long range single motor variant that will come sometime in the future. So you have to sort of look out for more details about that. And if you're wondering when this car will be launched in Singapore, we understand that it will be sometime in Q3. So that's not going to be too long away. So yes, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do remember to like, share and subscribe to our channel. And of course, you can also hit the notification bell to be alerted of all our upcoming videos. And you can also check us out on TikTok at SG Karma. So yes, that's my time here in Madrid done. I'll see you back home. Bye.